All right, well, here we go. It is the Monte Carlo Masters final preview. We're going to go into both players' route to the final, how each player can win the final as well, and look at some of the matchups that you should look out for as well, some of the tactical matchups. Before we get into that, please do remember to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Subscribing really does help. We are on the road to 3K subs, so uh, do smash that subscribe button. Thank you to all of those who are supporting the channel. Also, we are on all podcast platforms. Right. Enough of that. Let's get into this. So, Stefanos Tsitsipas makes it two years in a row, making the Monte Carlo Masters final. He, of course, won here last year. I say here as if I'm in Monte Carlo. Unfortunately not. But, look, I think... Clay is clearly his most preferred surface and it's great to see him so comfortable uh, again as well and playing some of his best at tennis. That's what we want to see. We want to see the best players playing at close to at least the optimum level. I think Sispas has shown that at least in flashes anyway throughout. A very impressive win today over his very straight sets and a very intelligent display as well. Daric Vakina, very impressive against Dimitrov. You know, a set and a breakup didn't manage to convert had to win it in the third set uh, but did really well and of course you know this is his maiden masters final it's something that as someone who is ranked you know 46 in the world at 22 years of age you just feel this could definitely continue to help catapult his career i did say after he beat novak djokovic uh, in his second round match that yes it wasn't a fully f- fit, match fit Djokovic and not his best, of course, but just to beat someone of that caliber, it can kickstart a career. And it may be the case, especially if he wins here today or wins here tomorrow, it definitely could be the start of something. Uh, He's a very, very talented individual, of course, a very decorated junior career as well. And, you know, we're yet to see him go very deep in some of the major tournaments. This is now a major tournament he's going deep in. He's only 22. He's got a lot of time still left on his side. Uh, could this be his chance to, you know, could this be a massive chance for him to continue this fantastic form he's in? I would say yes. Uh, who wins? We'll get into that. Uh, but first of all, let's quickly look at their routes to the final. Then, So Dalic Fakina, you can see, beating Giron in the first round, impressive win. Then Novak Djokovic in three sets, very impressive win, especially because he had, he had moments where he just, mentally collapsed but then in the end he managed to do really really well to recover which i thought was fantastic i thought it really really was fantastic um and it's great to see it really is great to see i genuinely just uh very very happy to see that i just i just think for me personally it's good to see someone just it's good to see someone be very very calm in certain situations i think he definitely loses his uh his mind at times but most of the time he's able to at least recover and that's what he's done really well this whole week i think he's done really really well to recover which is fantastic to see Uh, and then we have of course the win over david goffan really impressive straight set win there and then taylor fritz as well had to come and dig deep really very physical affair Fritz in fantastic form this year, so a great win. And then Dimitrov, who I think has been playing some fantastic tennis on the clay, don't really expect him to, but I think he's really improved and clearly been working on that drive backhand and something that he doesn't really utilize a lot on other surfaces. He's got a lot more time and he definitely, for me, looked very good this week. I actually backed him to beat uh, Davidic Fakina, but just too strong the Spaniard. So that's his route for Sitsipas. Quickly go through that. Fognini. In his second round tie, very impressive win in straight sets. Jair as well, straight sets, easy as you like. Schwartzman, that was the hiccup, wasn't it? The one where it looked, oh, this is a pretty, pretty tough, tough ask after he was not only a set and 5 2 up, but then ended up losing that second set, just mentally collapsed, uh, I guess, and sh- started shanking everything left, right, and center. Then the last set, he was four love down, had to win six games in a row, but did so very well in the end recovered mentally well both these guys are susceptible to getting broken to mentally breaking down but both of them are also able to recover well and i think that is what we're seeing both a similar age since past 23 if i'm not mistaken as well so i don't think it's a generational thing i just think you know they are learning they're still very young and and it can happen Uh, you can switch off for a second and next thing you know you're kind of 
fall up down, and that's what's happened, I think, with some of these players. But Sisfas, of course, has made Grand Slam semi-finals a final last year, two sets of love up against Djokovic. Right, didn't manage to get it done, but still very impressive that run. He's won Masters tournaments. He's the more experienced out of the two. Then against Zverev, a very tactical, tactically astute performance, you have to say. Very intelligent display of tennis and got it done really impressively in straight sets. So, in terms of, I guess, tactically, what are the matchups to look out for? Now, both players definitely look to their forehand to dictate play for the most part. Uh, you'd have to say that David Fakina's backhand is definitely more of a weapon than Stefanos Sitspas's, but it's how the backhand is going to be used, I think, throughout the final that's going to be the most important thing. Sitspas used it really intelligently against Zverev, slicing it at times, slicing it short at times to drag Zverev in. I don't think that's a particularly good tactic to use against David Fakina. He's, yes, Zverev is very quick. Um, for not just his size, but generally as a tennis player. But David Fakina is lightning. He'll get to it, and it's not as low for him. He's not as tall as Verev. He tends to be able to just pounce on those shorter balls, put them away, and if he needs to come to net and volley, he, he will do so. He's not the most natural of volleyers, I would say, but uh, he definitely is someone who's willing to come to the net if he needs to. So those are the couple of dynamics there. Uh, I think we will see a lot of backhand to backhand. And I think David Fakina will be the one who will try and step on it st- first. He'll be the one that will go down the line. Now, he needs to be careful because Sitspas has one of the better running forehands in the sport for me. Uh, he has t- seems to have great flexibility on that shot, especially cross court with a forehand. And of course, finds fantastic angles. Now, so David Fakina also finds good angles on that forehand. Huge top spin on both forehands from David Fakina and Sitspas. Now, that could be a potential, I guess, blockbuster kind of tactical matchup because we could see a lot of cross-court rallies between the forehands and then who is going to be the first one to go down the line and do they trust themselves to hit with enough depth and power to really penetrate through that backhand of the opponents? I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, but that's definitely a potential matchup. But for me, it's going to be not just that, but the drop shots as well. Now, both these players have been playing the drop shot throughout the whole week. It's something that, of course, Novak Djokovic has tried to utilize in the last couple of years. He had success with it in the clay court swing last year. Nadal, of course, as well. Um, but it's something that Djokovic has definitely tried to utilize a lot. Now, a lot more players are using it on the clay courts because especially when your opponent's so far back, it's just a natural shot to hit. Sometimes, sometimes a drop shot doesn't even have to be that good. What I would say is that both these players are not going to want to be super far back behind the baseline. So drop shots are definitely going to be interesting uh, in this tie because I think they will both naturally play it because I think it's very hard to just switch off not playing drop shots whatsoever. And I think they should play it at times. But I do think we're going to see some drop shots get punished from both players, to be perfectly honest with you. Sits pass is more comfortable uh, taking on drop shots, approaching, comes to the net. Sometimes you can be a bit safe approaching uh, the net and can go to the backhand, but it's too short, the into-out forehand. He needs to commit to that side, especially because Dalic Fakina is very good on the backhand. I think he's very solid on the backhand side, uh, especially down the line, and he can pass players with ease at times, we've seen throughout the whole week. So I think if he's going to go to the backhand, he needs to be very, very solid, and then he needs to do well, of course, with the first volley. Dalic Fakina, when he drop shots... Um, sorry, when sits past drop shots, I think he'll get forward and I think he'll probably get there with a bit more time, I would imagine. Uh, but we'll see. So, interesting dynamics. I can see Dutch Rukin also utilizing the lobbies, used it at times quite intelligently, especially against Dimitrov. He did. Um, and sits past will want to come to the net at times. Return positions are interesting because Dutch Rukin is pretty far back for return positions. I think sits past will try and utilize the shorter serves out wide on both sides. He utilized them really well against Zverev, who also was returning pretty deep in the court. And it then gives you a lot of room to come forward and volley if need be, or it gives you normally a shorter return that you can then pounce on and then come to the net or just even just put away that one that serve plus one shot. So Sispas's serve plus one game is really good, really good. Not just on clay, but all surfaces, but especially on clay, he makes more forehands you know, more often than not. And then not just more forehands, but 
he ends up hitting them with fantastic depth and penetration through the court. Darius Rakina needs to serve really well for me. We saw Zverev serve big and serve a lot of first serves in, but not hit his spots. Now, Darius Rakina isn't as talented a server as Zverev, but if he has a good serving there, that'll put him in good stead because Sitsipas was blocking really nicely, uh, especially slicing as well. The defensive slice was working beautifully on the backhand, and he was just moving Zverev around, around nicely. Now, I think Darius Rakina won't be as uncomfortable in some of those instances, so I can see it potentially becoming quite a physical match. Uh, Sitsipas had a similar one against, uh, I think it was Jair, where there weren't many winners hit. Uh, and then it was just a battle of attrition, really, and who would make the error. I think we could see periods of that, where Sitsipas won't actually go hell for leather, and he might say, okay, I'm going to basically hit with you. And I'm going to be confident and comfortable enough to say, well, you might try and hit my backhand, but my footwork's good enough to get around my backhand. And if I need to hit it, I will. Uh, and I've got enough time on the clay, but majority of the time I'm going to hit that forehand. I think he will slice at times, but not as much as he did against Zverev. I don't think he'll slice as short as well. Uh, I think if he does, it'll be to try and open up angles. Uh, but it's going to be a really intriguing match because Darius Fakina has a little bit of everything, to be fair. Uh, he really does. And you can see why he was a decorated junior. And I think he won Wimbledon, if I'm not mistaken, as a junior. So... Yes, he's a very good clay court player from what we've seen, but he's an all-court player from uh, at least what history it takes anyway. So it's going to be very intriguing, uh, to say the least. I think uh, a lot of these ties, especially on on clay, are normally decided by who can be more solid in the backhand to backhand exchanges, but also the serve return dynamics. I think we're going to see a lot of balls made on return, unless Sitspaz has a fantastic service game serving day as he did against Zverev today which then you know you never know then he could run away with it potentially uh, because he just served that well Zverev is one of the better returners one of the best returners on tour Darius Fakina is also up there you imagine as well so yeah a very very interesting tie for sure I'm going to go three sets I'm going to go six pass to retain his crown but don't sleep on Davidic Fakina. He'll fight till the end. The one thing he needs to not do is, is dive. Because as soon as he dives, he might get injured and he just thinks it's just silly. So he just needs to be very intelligent in the way that he plays against Sitsipas. Uh, he will see how he played against Schwartz when he needs to think about how can I make it difficult for him? How can I make it difficult for Sitsipas? How can I get him in uncomfortable positions? Uh, and he needs to use... Just have a little bit of thought into that. Um... And I'm sure he will. He can potentially drag Sitsipas in and, and then if he's comfortable passing him, maybe that's a tactic for him to employ. We saw Medvedev do a similar thing against Sitsipas at the Australian Open. It's a different surface. Of course, different player. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, for me, yeah, that's my prediction though. I'm really looking forward to it. It's very tough to call uh, just because of how well Dalic Rikin has been playing. But he's had a lot of battles as has Sitsipas. But of course, Sitsipas will have a bit of respite after an easy uh, win over Zarev then. Uh, ADF had over Dimitrov so all to play for uh, cannot wait for it we should be doing a well we will be doing a watch along of that tomorrow so do check it out as well do get involved uh, do remember to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel of course get involved as well uh, if you're interested with our Patreon we will probably start memberships as well on here if you're interested in football do check out our football channel Quality Shot Football uh, it's on separate channel uh, do subscribe to that if you're interested in football content and then also get involved on the podcast platforms there as well thanks very much guys stay safe and well and see you on the